Lajarius Sneed has officially been traded, and so that means it's time for Mock Draft 4.0. As now with Sneed in Tennessee, the needs for the Chiefs have now switched up, and well, we'll see if that affects Brett Veach's draft strategy or the way I do this mock draft. Now, I will give you a little bit of a spoiler. There is a draft pick trade coming. I'm going to move up at some point, so make sure you stick around because you're going to want to see where I move up and who I take with it because I think it is going to be a very, very key pick. Before we get into the mock draft, though, I want to put a little special deal out there. It's a Monday. It's all the Monday scaries. Luckily, you know, we got some positive stuff on today. So if you follow me on Twitter or X, whatever you'd like to call it, at Chase Andrews underscore the first 10 people to do so, I'm going to give you a follow back. You don't believe my word? You can ask countless people in the comment section. Trust me, I'm a man of my word. First 10, I follow you back. So if you're not following me already, go down there. I'm getting out memes. I'm getting out a lot of informative stuff as well. It's a fun place. I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. Let's talk about the Chiefs draft picks because they technically have changed just slightly. They still have their rounds one through four picks all the same. The two round five picks that they have. And then they have that round seven pick that is now via Tennessee. Obviously with the seventh round pick swap that was included in the luxurious need trade. Seven total picks for the Kansas City Chiefs. And obviously throughout this draft process, the wide receivers held a pretty high stakes just because of the way they played last year. And that's a really good draft class. But honestly, the Chiefs' needs are kind of slim. I mean, you think of what they need to succeed in 2024. I think they need Chris Jones. Well, he's re-signed. They need a wide receiver. They got Marquise Brown. I think they need a quarterback. Well, Trent McDuffie's still pretty good. They've gotten pretty much everybody they needed to have back already back. So now it's just about filling out this team and making sure that those smaller holes are also filled along with the bigger ones that I think you have already filled in, with that being Chris Jones. So let's start it out here with my first pick over in the round one, number 32, Lad McConkey. I go with him again as doing threes through PFF. He is the highest rated receiver left at pick 32 a majority of the time. And trust me, I did like three mock drafts trying to make sure I got the most accurate one. And every single time is McConkie, so I picked him. I think he is the pick that I would go with for the Kansas City Chiefs just because, well, he fits in well with this Chiefs depth chart. I think if you look at the guys that Brett Veach has brought in, that Brett Veach has kept from last year, Rasheed Rice is kind of your all-around do-it guy. He'll take a lot of screens. He can do a bunch of different facets things. And we never really got to explore his deep threat potential. Marquise Brown says he can perform at all three levels, but I'm going to use him as a deep threat. Lad McConkie, that's your short-term, short routes a little bit of a Travis Kelsey type wide receiver, a slot type guy like Sky Moore, kind of pair him with them. And then you got a supervillain, Kadarius Tony, who maybe or maybe not has bricks for hands. We will find out in 2024. Either way, this is still a pretty good wide receiver room, even with him at the wide receiver of four. Now, McConkey has played a lot in college over the past three years with Georgia, including a national championship game in which he scored a touchdown. Now, if you look at his stats throughout his entire college career, there's nothing that's going to pop off the board. And I know that there are people going to be in the comment section saying, I don't want McConkey. I want Xavier Worthy. I want Adonai Mitchell. I want AD. I agree. I would love to have AD Mitchell. The problem is he has not been available in any of the mock drafts I've been doing at pick 32. And if he's there, I'm taking him. But McConkey is by far and away the second best choice. And his stats are just a small portion of what he brings to the table. His agility is off the charts. His ability to shake cornerbacks and to shake safeties is unlike anybody that I have seen in the NFL draft in the past couple of years. And again, he's the most likely guy to actually be available at pick number 32. So as much as I'd like A.D. Mitchell, I truly feel like McConkie's the safe bet to actually be there. I mentioned a trade. Well, here we are. Bang! I'm going to trade up here in the second round, giving up the Chiefs' third round pick and their second round pick to move up just about 20 spots, under a little, just a little under it, to pick number 48. You'll see who I pick in just a second, but is this a trade that you like? Is it something that you would think the Chiefs could actually do and you would be happy with? Well, here's your time to let me know if I screwed up and I should not be hired as the GM of the Kansas City Chiefs, or if you think this is the smartest thing you've seen in a while and you think Brett Veach, he's got competition. Type Y for yes if you like this trade. Type in for no. Let me down in the comment section. I pick with number 48, Braden Fisk. Now, if you've been on this show, watched it, 
as a loyal viewer for the past two months. First of all, thank you. Second of all, you know my love for Braden Fisk and what I saw from him at the Combine was something that I would like to see in Kansas City. Now, his stats throughout college, especially at Florida State, were really, really good. 19 and a half sacks, 15 QB hits. But the thing that I look at, his time all throughout college, even transferring to Florida State, his hurries were absolutely exceptional. 87 is really kind of crazy. And I believe it's because of his speed, which is something that I saw at the Combine, and it's exactly why I loved him there. If you look at the Chiefs' defensive line, they have George Karloftis, who to me is a movement guy. He's a bigger one. He's going to rely on his agility to get around the block, not his speed. Now, past that, you have Chris Jones, who I think is similar to Karloftis, using his bigger body less than his speed. Derek Nottie, also similar, using his body instead of speed. Felix Nuduke Uzoma, along with Charles Omenihu, are more the speed type guys. But Nuduke Uzoma is going to be a second year guy, and Omenihu may not be back until week eight. You need somebody with speed. Braden Fisk, especially in the interior defensive line, will be that guy. I believe he would be a great addition to the defensive line and make it, to me, that'd be the best defensive line in the NFL. Now, we obviously traded away our round three pick. So in round four, I go running back. I take Braylon Allen. And it's funny enough, I've seen a lot of articles about the Chiefs potentially drafting him over the past couple of days. So maybe I made a right decision here. Round four, pick 131. A big reason why I'm going running back in round four is because the Chiefs do not have any running backs, at least that I trust on the roster, besides Isaiah Pacheco. I know they have Denaric Prince. Uh, I know they got P. Ryan, but at the same time, I'm not sure that I trust them to be a RB2 in this system. Now, Clyde Edwards-Alaire and Jarek McKinnon, they could still be re-signed. We just have yet to see them. Roland Allen, though, he would be an RB2 day one, and I would not question it whatsoever. This guy was a menace in college, especially in the touchdown game. 12 touchdowns this past year, 11 in 2022, and 12 in 2021. Had over 1,000 yards every single year besides this past year, and you look at that game total, if you'd have played that extra game, I promise you, he would have had 1,000 yards and a lot less carries than he had in his prior year at 2022, where he had over 1,200. I also just think he would be a great fit with this roster. If you kind of look at the running back that Isaiah Pacheco is and how they liked him in round seven, Braylon Allen is similar in some ways and different in other ways, and I think those things could honestly work together to make a very, very popular and very, very good running back room, and I really kind of hope that Brett Beach actually pays attention to that. I also hope that you pay attention to Prize Picks because it's one of our many great sponsors. Plus, you can get a $100 deposit match by going to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and using code CLNS. Now, I know what you're saying. Jace, football season's over. How am I going to do Prize Picks? Well, they don't just have football. They got basketball. The March Madness is going on. They've got NBA Prize Picks. And I know playoffs are coming up. They've got NHL and they've got baseball, which baseball starts in literally just less than a couple days. Now, you choose two to more players to play. You can go two to six. Pick more or less on their prize picks projections. Then you choose flex or power play. Now, I want to show you this because it's the last time to get in on the season-long projections for the MLB. Ronald Acuna, I'm going more on his season-long home runs of 37.5. I got KB, Chris Bryant, more than 19.5 home runs. He's playing at Coors Field. Thin atmosphere, I think he's going to hit 20. And the Mookie Betts, who is off to a slower start, I'm going to go more there, 32 and a half. I truly feel like he could be a really, really good point to make MVP conversations in 2024. Go put these in. This is your last time to get them in because guess what? The season starts Thursday. Not too much time. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types. That's what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use the code CLNS. For your first deposit match up to $100. Shout out to Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy sports made easy. Let's go back in the wide receiver well because I think there needs to be two taken. I'm going Taj Washington, the number two wide receiver at USC with quarterback Caleb Williams. And I truly do feel like he is a really, really nice option at round five. Um, I really don't know where the Chiefs headspace is at in terms of how many wide receivers they would like to take. Obviously, Marquise Brown kind of changed that, but if they would like to go to, like I would like them to, this is a really good option. Over 1,000 yards this past year on just 59 receptions. That's an 18 average. This guy was incredible. He is very agility-like, like Lad McConkey, but he's also got some speed. A little bit of a smaller guy, but I still think this would be a perfect addition to the room with eight touchdowns. Plus, again, I know that there's questions. Is Brett Beach going to get two wide receivers? Is he going to get one wide receiver? What is he going to do? 
I personally am liking the fact to buff out the wide receiver room as much as humanly possible because I look back at last year. I look back at the season. Think about how much easier, how much less stress would have been put on if the wide receivers for the Chiefs were good. You obviously cut Marquez Valdez-Cantling. I don't think you trust Kadarius Tony or Sky more. I want to make sure you have the depth filled to the brim on your wide receiver room so that you can have multiple opportunities to find somebody that works. You talk about Rasheed Rice, second round pick, and he ended up being the top wide receiver. Well, maybe you go a guy at round five here, he ends up being wide receiver four by the end of the season. That's my hope. We'll just have to see, though. Offensive tackle is also very important, and so the second round five pick, the compensatory one, I'm going a offensive tackle with Ladarius Henderson from Michigan. Now, the reason I'm picking him, he played left tackle a majority of his time in Michigan, and over his 1,000 career pass blocking snaps, he allowed just nine sacks, and uh, he had a pretty mobile quarterback lineman in J.J. McCarthy, and we all know how mobile Patrick Mahomes can be, so I think he'd be really, really good. Plus, you're looking at this left tackle position for the Chiefs. You got Wanya Morris, who I think the Chiefs do trust, but Donovan Smith, still a free agent. Obviously, with the Jerry Sneed trade, you now have a little bit of money to spend, almost $27 million. Could you re-sign him? Could you re-sign Mike Danner? Well, at this point, they're not re-signed. I'm going to say let's get an offensive tackle in the later part of the draft to help out Wanya Morris and make sure that he's just not left out to dry if and when maybe he's not as ready as we think he is. And then the final pick of my 4.0 Chiefs mock draft is a cornerback. It's Jerry Espinrow, and I know that this is probably a little later than you thought for a cornerback, but uh, I like the intangibles he brings, and, and certainly in round seven, you're honestly just going out there and throwing darts at a random board and hoping you hit one. I think that Steen's replacement is already on the team. That's why I picked him here at round seven, because I truly think if Brett Veach was willing to not let, or to, to let, Legereus Sneed be traded to the Tennessee Titans. He trusted his cornerback room. And well, I don't think that's a bad sentiment because Trent McDuffie was the number four ranked PFF cornerback in the entire NFL last year. That's out of 127 guys. Joshua Williams played really well in his time. He actually had a higher PFF rank than Legereus Sneed last year. Obviously, we know what they think about Jalen Watson. Echo Boydo, a practice squad guy who ended up making the roster at the end of the year and was uh, played a pretty good special teams role in the postseason. But I still do feel like they're not 100% comfortable with the entirety of the cornerback room. That's why Jarius Monroe is a pick here that I like. His intangibles are good. And when you're in round seven, I think that matters more than the stats. Good news is his stats are also pretty dang good. His quarterback rating was less than 50. His interceptions at number three. His touchdowns allowed were just one. And his PFF overall grade, 81.5. Everything is there for him to be a solid, solid guy. But we will have to wait and see if that is exactly the pick. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a good one, but we will have to wait and see. How do you like my mock draft, though? Because overall, there is some guys in here that I think would look good, and there are some guys that I don't really think overall would fit. So if we kind of go through this overall, just one more time about my picks. Lad McConkey, round one, pick number 32. Braden Fisk, round two, pick 48. Braylon Allen, round four, pick 131. And then in we go to round five with Taj Washington, a wide receiver from UC, USC. Ladarius Henderson, the round five, 173 pick. And then the Tennessee pick they got at 221, obviously trading from 252. They get Jarius Monroe. How do we like it? A, B, C, D, or F? Let me know down in the comment section down below. You think this is a good one? You think this is a bad one? You think that I am stupid and they should really hire someone else for this job to cover the Chiefs because that was the worst mock draft you've ever seen? Well, that'd be an F. If you think it's the best mock draft, it's an A. I'll take any and all feedback. Just get down there and let me know. A, B, C, D, or F. I'm giving myself an A. I think it's pretty good. I want two wide receivers. I think the cornerback room is already pretty good. I'm saying if you want an extra cornerback that you want a veteran presence, go out, sign Xavier Howard, go sign somebody, Stephon Gilmore, I don't care. But don't ways to pick in the draft. I think there's more important positions. Hit that subscribe button. You see it flashing on the bottom of your screens. Thank you, Sam. YouTube.com slash Chiefs TV. You're not going to find better Chiefs coverage than right here. So make sure you join us. For now, Chiefs Kingdom, though. Peace out.